In the ongoing Israel-Hamas conflict, which has entered its third week and led to severe humanitarian crisis in Gaza, there is a growing scrutiny of the United Nations and its ability to facilitate international diplomacy for a ceasefire. To shed light on this matter, I asked former Minister of Foreign Affairs Kun Kantati Supamongkon. We saw the attempt in UN Security Council to pass the resolution, but it failed four times because of the block of the vote by US and Russia. What's the meaning behind this? What do you read the situation? Um, well, the um, uh, Security Council um, has the task um, under the UN Charter of um, acting to protect, you know, that's chapter seven, protect um, international peace and security. Um, but the five permanent members of the UN, of the UN Security Council um, has the veto power. So um, uh, what we saw, we had um, four actually attempts at um, uh, introducing uh, uh, draft resolutions at the Security Council. Um, two attempts by Russia. Um, that failed because it did not get the um, majority. Now, the majority that they need to have is nine. Um, they did not get that, so there was no need for a veto. So the Russian um, uh, attempts, two attempts failed without the use of a veto power. Okay? And um, so um, the U.S. had support for its own resolution, but the Russians and the Chinese vetoed. Um, uh, so that also failed. Now, that was because of the uh, exercise of the veto power by China and, um, and, and uh, Russia. Brazil um, introduced a draft, um, which actually was a compromise, because Brazil, as I heard from the inside, had um, uh, negotiated very, very carefully um, with all parties concerned, especially with the U.S. And so it, um, it included the wording important uh, to the U.S., um, for example, um, condemning um, what happened um, in Israel on October 7th, um, the Hamas attack. Um, but in the end, unfortunately, the U.S. Um, uh, voted against that draft resolution, even though 12 other countries have voted in favor. So that was a veto because it passed the nine, nine um, countries mark. Um, so once... Uh, uh, that was done. The, the U.S. explained the reason behind the veto. And that was because even though the draft had been negotiated to a great degree, um, the U.S. said that because the draft failed to mention um, Israel's right um, of self-defense. Um, so that was why the U.S. Um, vetoed that draft resolution. So that was uh, the failure of four attempts. Um, my my um, observation on that is that um, you know the UN Charter um, uh, explicitly says in Article 51 that the um, uh, all members of the uh, United Nations have the inherent right of self-defense anyway. So that's already there, um, and it was um, uh, unfortunate that um, because it wasn't there in this particular resolution, um, but it was there at the charter level, um, uh, the U.S. was not able to accept this and had to cast the veto. So when that failed, mm. yeah. then, then um, because of um, uh, the availability under the resolution called Uniting for Peace Resolution, which um, came about in 1950 because of the um, Korean War situation, uh, the, um, during the Korean War situation, uh, the, uh, uh, um, the Soviet Union then um, vetoed certain resolutions. Um, 
it was a deadlock at the Security Council. So um, uh, the General Assembly um, uh, had the Uniting for Peace resolution, which allowed the um, General Assembly to um, uh, take up the issues concerning international peace and security. The distinction between um, the uh, resolutions of the Security Council and the resolutions of the General Assembly is that the resolution of the Security Council um, would be legally binding, but resolutions of the General Assembly are recommendations only. But what we have seen, we have seen 121 countries. It was 120 recorded, but another country um, came forward um, later um, saying that um, they had actually voted in favor, but there was a technical problem. Um, so 121 countries out of 193 countries supported this um, resolution in the General Assembly. That is the moral authority of this resolution. It does not have the legal authority, but it tells the world that 121 countries out of 193 countries, more than two thirds of um, the international community, the membership of the UN support this resolution, which calls for a humanitarian truce. It did not even call for a ceasefire, yeah. which was actually the first intention of Jordan and the um, co-sponsors. But it, it ended up with um, the word humanitarian truce. And so it um, uh, shows the overwhel overwhelming um, opinion of the world community. But what's the implication of the UN General Assembly resolution? Because the two major countries regarding the situation, Israel and the US, vote no for the resolution, even though 120, the majority vote yes, yes to the resolution. What's the outcome of this? Because you just mentioned that it's non-binding agreement. Yes. So what will be the impact? And, unfortunately, the it's non-binding, but it has um, the reflection of the will of the and the opinion of the international community, 121 countries now. Um, and so it has the moral authority. So if you look, the moral authority has a weight in itself. But um, uh, unfortunately, the reality is that um, uh, Israel and will probably continue, but maybe um, it will uh, realize the um, significance of the moral authority and and there are penalties to go against the moral authority in many different ways. You know, the, um, uh, the reputation of the country and other things. So these are the uh, things that I hope will convince Israel to, um, uh, to be mindful that um, the international community wants a truce to protect civilians, civilians under international law and under international humanitarian law must be protected. Um, you cannot have an unlimited war. So um, this is the message from the world community. Does it mean the deadlock of international diplomacy regarding the mechanism of the UN? And in your view, do you think the war will escalate into the region? It is um, important to be very afraid of escalation because it's possible to escalate. Um, escalate means um, expanding um, into um, a fight uh, between Israel and Hezbollah in Lebanon. Um, when you expand the war into a regional war, this is now a localized situation, uh, it's always very dangerous. So um, I hope all the parties concerned will um, be very mindful of that. There is a risk of escalation, yes. How do you read the close alliance between the US and Israel in having major role in this conflict? Well, I think um, uh, the US has um, a policy situation at this point, there, there are many layers of policy. The one, one explanation that has been given for many, many years is that the um, U.S. so-called unconditional support for Israel. And I, I feel that it's not unconditional, but there is a perception that there is um, an unconditional U.S. support for Israel 
has been due to the um, uh, Jewish lobby in the U.S. That has been one explanation. Um, but when you look at um, the situation now, you will see that um, there's also uh, a conflict between um, uh, the U.S. and China, as well as the U.S. and uh, Russia. Um, so um, in the Security Council, we noticed that um, Russia and China um, vetoed a draft that was um, uh, put forward by uh, the U.S. So you, you, you do have that situation. And Iran, um, the U.S. Um, is trying to mend relations with Iran to a certain degree, but there are still problems. So you have all these other equations which um, makes the U.S. maybe um, uh, uh, even more supportive of, um, of um, Israel to a degree. So you have all these um, variables in place. But um, I understand um, that the U.S. Um, is now warning Israel uh, about the importance of protecting civilians. Um, okay, you know, you, um, uh, Israel wants to eliminate Hamas. The U.S. supports the elimination of Hamas since the U.S. considers Hamas a terrorist organization. Um, but the civilians must be protected. And I think the warning uh, that the U.S. had given to Israel uh, has made some impact. There has been a delay in the use of ground forces. Um, so we hope that uh, 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 prudence will prevail and caution will prevail. Respond from Israel on the 7th of October from Prime Minister Netanyahu. He said this is 9-11 version on Israel. What do you see the impact or the aftermath out of this with the viewpoint of Israel to see this as 9-11? What can they learn from the, the real 9-11 from the U.S.? Oh, well, um, it was... Um unacceptable to, um, uh, to have an, a group of uh, people you know, from Gaza uh, kill innocent civilians, uh, as we saw on October 7th. Uh, uh, it is, in a way, traumatic for Israel, as 9-11 um, was traumatic for the U.S. But, but you will notice, though, that uh, U.S. reaction to that attacked on the World Trade Center by um, going to war in uh, Afghanistan uh, and also eventually going to war in Iraq um, did not bear much, much um, success. Um, after 20 years of fighting um, in uh, Afghanistan, the Taliban are back and the U.S. withdrew. Um, Iraq is still a problem, as you know. Um, so uh, be careful, you know, because if Israel goes in um, to Gaza, to the Strip, uh, there are um, tunnels that um, Hamas have been uh, digging and forming. The tunnels, I believe, are 30 miles, 300 miles long, 300 miles. Um, and, and it's under... More than 500 kilometers. Yes. And Gaza is such a small area, you know. And, um, and so fighting inside a city, inside an urban uh, situation, um, house to house, building to building, is going to be very, very difficult, even though Israel may have um, uh, confidence to a degree. But it's, it's, it's difficult. What I would have liked to see... Um, uh, is, is the continuation of um, law enforcement um, action by Israel. You know, for example, Israel, since it um, left Gaza uh, in 2005, um, Shimbat, the um, uh, uh, Israeli um, security apparatus, has been very um, successful to a degree in identifying and eliminating and arresting um, terrorists. Uh, that, I think, that route should be um, uh, used again to um, uh, the maximum degree 
um, to do law enforcement rather than um, collective punishment. Mm -hmm. I think collective punishment has to be um, uh, uh, prohibited. Mm -hmm. you know, it is a violation of international law. Um, so go for the bad guys and, um, and uh, deal with them accordingly, but, but um, civilians must be protected. It's very controversial, the, the saying by the, the statement by UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres. He said Israel should look back to the past 75 years as well because what happening with Palestine or Hamas doesn't just happen in Hamas attack, doesn't happen in vacuum. Yes. That's what he said. And of course, Israel doesn't like this. Well, um, the Secretary General has mentioned, uh, and he used the word uh, October 7th did not happen in the vacuum. It has um, background leading to that. And the background is the, um, uh, the way that the Palestinians had um, uh, been uh, treated, more or less, um, by Israel. And that, that is a controversial situation. You know, um, Gaza has been um, isolated. Um, the, um, in the West Bank, you have the um, continuation of the uh, Israeli settlers um, deep inside the West Bank um, of the Jordan River, which is um, occupied territory. So you have a situation in which um, Palestine, Palestine uh, is occupied by Israel. So Israel. Um, uh, has that responsibility to, um, to ensure that the um, people of Palestine will receive um, uh, their, their freedom. And I think eventually it has to go back to the two-state solution. Um, so you will have um, uh, Israel and the state of Palestine um, with recognized borders, um, living peacefully with one another. Um, the issue of Jerusalem has to be settled. You know, um, East Jerusalem could become the uh, uh, capital of uh, Palestine, whereas West Jerusalem remains now um, as Israel has uh, declared capital of Israel. So a solution um, um, based on um, the two-state solution uh, and the settlement of the Jerusalem uh, problem remains um, the, the ultimate goal. Geographically, it's quite far from Thailand. It happens in the Middle East, but Thai people are being affected. What do you think Thailand, especially in terms of foreign policy, should be careful in this international policy? Um, well, Thailand, um, has emphasized the fact that we are not um, a party to the conflict. And that is correct. Um, so we are uh, interested, the government is interested in protecting um, the lives of Thai people. Um, since the situation now is, um, is still fragile and uncertain, uh, my hope is that all Thais will return to Thailand. Uh, and. Uh, and what um, uh, the um, Speaker of the Parliament has done um, has been very effective so far in traveling, in sending a delegation to, um, to Iran um, to talk to representatives of um, Hamas. I think, um, I hope that um, uh, the end result will be the release of all ties. Um, the other channel that we can um, look to would be um, Doha and Qatar. Um, uh, Doha hosts the, um, hit, the, the leaders of Hamas are actually in Doha. Uh, so um, all those diplomatic means um, we, we should um, utilize. Dr. Kandati, thank you very much for joining me. My pleasure. Thank you. Mm -hmm.